lot of knobs in here. More than just you and me. Hey, thanks for joining us here at Power Mods. We're working on this Honda 300, making some big changes. When I got into my brakes, everything was kind of pooched. Everything was seized up. It's gonna cost me a lot of money through Honda to get all those original parts to make this thing work. And it's pretty much cheaper to buy this disc conversion kit that's made by Super ATV. We supply these, we sell these of course. You can uh, hit us up, we can hook you up. Uh, very easy install. We've already done the other side, so we kind of know the ins and outs of it. I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do. This kit comes with the instructions. And check out all these little parts and pieces. So if you've already torn your front end apart, replaced your bearings and your seals, maybe your uh, rod end and your ball joints, you're looking at about half an hour to do this whole job complete. Very simple to do. This kit's been around for a long time. We've sold a bunch of these kits and you know what, it was just about time that we did this ourselves. It's available for most Honda units with uh, drum brakes. So it's a bit of a no brainer really. And pretty inexpensive. By the time you buy all your parts and pieces that you need um, from Honda, this is the way to go. Boom. Well, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and we'll just start right on. We'll start, we're gonna just get right into this because this is a lot of fun. You know, the kit doesn't ask for Loctite in these, so we're not gonna do it. Didn't even give us torque values, so we're not gonna do it. We're just gonna do the old uh, kind of by eye method, by feel method. Gotta make sure this bracket points backwards because your caliper is always mounted on the back. Now the kit comes with actually very detailed instructions. And if you're in Canada, we can get this to you probably in about, well, it depends on what time you order. Usually the next day, pretty much, we just bought another one of these bikes the other day, a 92 guy, 92, eh? It's a little older than this one. I think it's a 91 or a 92. Brakes are done. So by the time you go and buy all the parts to make the brakes work, this is really the way to do it is we need our hub, our original hub back. And there's a bunch of stuff on here you can remove. You don't need the vent lines anymore. Um, it's a good time to pull out your uh, old brake fluid, drain everything out. We've already flushed our system, so that's all done. Oh, she's hot in here, lads. That out. The one thing you got to do is you got to get rid of these studs. You got to press these. You can press them out. I've got to press. It's kind of a wonky kind of way to get it in there. It's a little Mickey Mouse. If you don't have a press, just do this. Grab yourself a hammer. If you want to keep your studs, you might want to use them again, maybe another bike. Just put a lug nut on there. Oopie. Just do that and pop that off. These are kind of handy to have because a lot of guys over torque them. I'm gonna, of course, keep all mine. Because I own a couple of these bikes. But you don't need to press for everything. You know what I'm saying? And you don't need to bring it to a shop to have them do it. This is the easy kind of stuff. That doesn't break your hub. That's it. Wow, is that ever easy? You need to space this out because your old drum took up a lot of room. And these are now gonna be your new wheel studs. I'm just starting one to get it kinda easier to hold on to basically. You can see how that hub sits on there. This is one of the easiest disc brake conversions I've ever done. 
I've done them on trucks and cars, old school vehicles. This is the best, easiest thing I've ever done. Easy peasy. Now, lube up this, lube up that seal surface. Put that right in there. Sometimes the supplied cotter pins are a little too long, they're hard to get through there. You can just put a little bend in it if you need to. We're not gonna have to do that today. I think we got a, yep, yeah, that's good. We got a short one right there. I don't like to go nuts with these cotter pins, bending them all over the place because if you really screw them up and you wanna take them off, it's hard to get them out when you need to. When you're putting these calipers on, you gotta make sure you put them on the right way. You wanna make sure that this bleeder valve is always up because when you're forcing air out through the system, it's gotta come out that bleeder valve. The air ends up inside your little uh, cylinder here and it's gonna to go to the top of it. You gotta pump it out. What a great kit. What a great kit. Parts that kind of threw me for a loop was the routing of this uh, brake line here. And the way that these little banjo fittings are turned, it makes it difficult to get them onto the back of this. Now it might differ from year to year, you know, bike to bike, but all I had to do was undo this junction block here, take it, undo both ends, flip it around to either side, and then, you know, we kind of got the distance that we needed to make this work. Well, this is the new banjo fitting that comes with it. One of these, that's gonna go like this. Man, they're a little wonky. It also comes with these little brackets that you can use to sort of remount them, but it, they're really not necessary on this one for our purposes. And maybe one of the other Honda models, yes. I don't expect to leave this in this position for long, so it's gonna work just fine for us. You just wanna make sure that your brake line isn't resting up against something that's moving or vibrating. That's it. See, there's a little bit of tension on that. Pinch that. There. All right. So all we need to do now is bleed those brakes. A lot of times because of dissimilar metals, the screws are steel and the housing here, this brake master housing, is uh, like a white metal, like, uh, I don't know what they are, some kind of formed stuff. Um, they rust in there or they corrode in there really badly. I got kind of lucky when I pulled them out that they didn't snap off. But usually what I do is I take the screwdriver and I give her a couple of taps and then I try to turn them out. If they feel like they're not gonna come out, I try to tighten them a wee bit, you hear a little snap and then they should turn out for you. We got lucky, everything kind of worked out for us this time. This is dot three. Dot four. This is dot four. You can use a dot three or dot four uh, brake fluid in this. I just wear goggles because sometimes it sort of shoots up. Just gotta pump it into the system. It's way better to have your friends handy when you're doing this because you got if you can get a guy up here pumping and then you releasing, that's the best way to do it. So I can feel a little bit of pressure building up. So that means we need to move downstairs and start to let some fluid out. Pump that up. We usually take the brake caliper that's furthest away from the uh, master and we get the air out of it first. Oh, can I get this on there? 
Okay, keep keep the cam on there. Can you, to get around so I can, actually see can you do it from here? It. Here, hold on. Three, hold that in. Do it again. Lots of, lots of fluid in there still? Yeah. And hold it in. Pump it up. Hold it in. Pump it up. Yeah, it's gonna work out a little bit of air, like air will come up through it too. Um, but that's good for now. All right, all that's really left to do now, you wanna make sure that you get all your greasy fingerprints off these. Just spray it down with brake cleaner, brake parts cleaner, and that should do it. If that grease gets on those pads, it's gonna more or less make them uh, useless. So that's it. That is the Honda front disc brake kit from Super ATV, available right here at Power Mods. We appreciate your support as usual. Keep coming back. Now we're gonna put these massive tires on. Whew. Okay, let me see, what do we got here? We only have three because one isn't still in shipping in the process of being shipped. Oh, it's the wrong size, wrong side. We, we don't have the other front. I still put it on just for fun. I know. You know what, we'll put it on to keep the bike from falling over because we need to, uh, we need to um, get that back, the rear end off so we can do this. All right. Is there a difference between the front and the front? Um, yeah, the, off the offset. Exactly, son. Let's come on. Yeah, so in the rim boxes, there's a, in the rim boxes, there's a,